this moment we're on Corvid Control. I'm shooting crows with the brand new Benelli 828U Sporter. Cameraman Daniel picks up the rifle and joins me for some of his very first Sika deer in County Wicklow. And I go to see butcher extraordinaire John Griffin and find out his tips and tricks for skinning and breaking down a carcass. Welcome to Field Sports Ireland. So you'll have to excuse my very attractive look this morning, but um, we've come out just to try and get some crows coming into this, coming into this shed where the farmer's feeding cattle. Uh, we spoke to him yesterday evening and he said there's loads and loads of hooded crows, or grey crows as we call them, coming in and they're just crapping all over everything. Um, not only are they taking the, the meal he's putting in for the cattle, but just they can spread disease and they're just nasty to have around. But um, more importantly for me, I just picked up the new Benelli 828U Sporter yesterday and I'm desperate to give it a few shots. We should have been here first light really, but it's a Saturday morning and it's not very sociable to be shooting at first light on a Saturday morning. But we've come out, we're going to give it a few hours. If we can get a dozen, I'll be more than happy. But for me, it's just really to see how this gun shoots. I set it up for myself last night. Um, just using the shim system that we spoke about before so feels pretty good just have a mixed lot of game bore shells left over from the shooting season um, but yeah a few crows starting to come in now so give it a lash for a couple of hours and see if we can catch up with a few of these hoodies Well, that was a busy start. We would probably eight or ten crows down and three or four feral pigeons that were coming into this shed. Um, unfortunately, I dropped a couple behind us and the other crows are coming to them. And there's a couple of spaces back there where there's houses, so I can't shoot in those directions. So I'm just trying to, trying to pick the gaps, which has proven difficult. But Stephen's just gone out there now to have a bit of a, bit of a pick up. Um, and we're gonna try and keep the crows coming up to this shed away from the dead birds back there. But yeah. Exciting start, a couple of cracking long kills there with the with the new gun, so starting to get confidence going in that. I get jittery when groups come in like that, so close, and you know you have to get a double out of it. And puts pressure on your shooting really, but because yeah, it's good fun. Out in front. Well, I've been absolutely blown away by the killing power of these little black gold 28 gram sixes. 28 gram fiber wad. Now I know I'm putting them through tight chokes, but super smooth to shoot and killed some of the some of the best crawls I've shot this morning in the last five ten minutes. Just had a half box of them left, and um, yeah, proper proper good kills. I really wasn't expecting to to knock birds at those sort of ranges with these. 
ground. See a long way away. But it's just, just seems to be dying off now. It's nine o'clock. So morning feed is probably over. Well, that's what's done for the morning. Um, I've actually run out of cartridges. Totally underestimated how good this would be. Had, as I said, a bag of mixed stuff. Um, went through that pretty quickly. Had one box of 32 gram six clear pigeon plastic wad and finished up with them. And to be honest, I saw very little difference between any of the shells. Had some 36 gram fours, some 28 gram sixes, and then some 30 gram sixes. And I just shot the way I normally did. It's great testament to the game bore loads. You could feel a little bit of difference on the shoulder, but you couldn't see the difference in my shooting. Just stuff died really, really nicely. Had the Benelli tightened up today. I like using tight chokes and heavy enough cartridges on crows. They can take a bit of killing. And um, yeah, shot, shot nicely for first time out with a new gun. Just picked this up yesterday. But it's just a testament to the adjustability of these Benelli's. Spent a bit of time last night and set it up the way I knew I wanted it. Everything looked right. When I was looking down the rib, it was where I wanted it to be. And just came out this morning and just shot naturally. Took a little bit of time to get used to the extra weight. It's, it's quite a heavy gun, but it's beautifully balanced. The weight is between your hands, so it moves very, very nicely. Personally, I prefer a 32 inch, but this being 30 with that weight a little bit further back, just took a little bit of extra moving. Just a little bit more work from, from my front hand, but beautiful gun, very, very smooth. Um, had some great kills with it, so first day out with a new gun, you can't ask for more than that. And um, yeah, just a brilliant morning. Great to get on top of these grey crows. They're a tricky, tricky bird to shoot and a tricky bird to catch up with. They're the very same as the UK carrion crow. We don't get the carrion crow here as much. I have heard of a couple of cases of it. But yeah, at this time of year when you're lambing, those great crows will do a lot of damage. So great to get on top of them. Great to get on top of the feral pigeons for the farmer and to keep some of the rooks out of his meal shed. So yep, crack of morning. Great way to spend a couple of hours. I just wish I'd have brought more cartridges. But what a fun morning that was in those crows and so great to get on top of the carrying crows in this area. And now I get behind the camera and guide Daniel on his first seek of deer. Seeker deer were introduced to County Wicklow in 1860 and quickly spread to become the county's most prolific deer. By nature, Sika are a very alert and elusive deer and are difficult to hunt, making them a challenging quarry for deer stalkers. They are also fantastic eating and Sika venison is one of my favourite meats. Daniel hails from the west coast where Sika are a rarity, so this morning's mission is a treat for him. It's almost my first time. This is the second time I've ever hunted Sika. I've got a lot of fallow and red from where I'm from and I um, was delighted this is probably the last stalk I'll get of the season and Jason kindly invited me up to have a go at a couple of late season hinds. And Daniel spots a hind and follower through a small gap in the trees and makes the final approach on his own. The follower is a yearling and there's no calf at foot, indicating that the hind is yelled, making her a perfect candidate for the cull. I indicate to Daniel to take the hind first and if the opportunity arises, to take the yearling. Got a little bit closer to the edge of the wood here. I knew it was a, a large yearling and an older hind. So I decided to take the older hind first. If the yearling had stopped before it went to the edge of the wood, it would have taken that as well. But I think out of the two, I made the right choice with the older hind. And uh, 
front shoulder, she just went straight down. It's uh, unusual, it's like she's had the top of her ears cut off somehow. Don't know what would have done that. No wonder she didn't hear you coming. <laughs> Yeah, had thrown the sticks in the ground and tripping over myself. <laughs> a great stock by Daniel, especially in those tricky conditions. But this isn't where our deer ends its journey. As with all meat shot for the table, we have to get it off the mountain. First we need to lighten the load. To see the full step-by-step -step walkthrough on how I grollock this deer, you can watch it by clicking the I at the top of the screen, or we have a link in the description below. We are now ready for the skilled hands of my friend John Griffin as he transforms our wild seeker deer into delicious fresh organic venison cuts that will fill our freezer. Here in his own purpose built meaty man cave, John, who also has a YouTube channel called The Hunting and Homestead Butcher, has fitted this small space out with all the gadgets needed for processing just about any meat. After working in the industry for many years, he decided he didn't like doing it for a job and wanted to do it for a hobby instead. With bandsaws, mincers and winches, he skins, breaks down and processes with all the skill of a master butcher, but with the care and respect that time and less pressure can afford. If you would like to watch the entire butchery of this deer, we have made another longer film that shows the full process, from skinning to bagging up, and you can watch it by tapping the eye at the top of the screen, or by finding a link to it in the description below. In the meantime, John is going to show us how to bone out and roll one of the legs for a great roast for any occasion. So there's a number of things we can do with the, the leg. Um, one of the things I like to do since I got myself a bandsaw is to freeze them. So I, I take the entire leg and I put it in the freezer and when it's frozen then I run it through the bandsaw. And I just take nice little stakes across through the bone as well and stop at the shank. Then shorten up the shank and cook that separately. So one of the simplest ways uh, to do the leg is just to split it up and take the bone out of it and then to, to bone it, what we call bone and roll it. Uh, so I'm just going to follow the bone down. So on the inside of the leg now this is where we're going down. So this is actually called the top side here. So I'm going down on the top side, go down to the starts to open out. You'll see the seaming out there. Then we get down to the leg here. There. You can take this muscle off here. So this is the shank end of it, and we'll mince that. Take out the kneecap. So what we have here then is the haunch, and we can roll that together like that. And um, I'll show you in a while. I'm going to put netting around that. So I have fine netting that I use and put through a tube, and you end up with a nice little roast. It's true. this way. Nice round roast. I am truly blessed that I'm in a fortunate enough position to be able to follow my food from field to table, 
and to see all the skills involved that make this fresh organic produce. And you know what? It tastes all the sweeter for it. Well that's it for this month. I'd like to thank everyone for watching and I'd like to thank all the guys that have helped me put this show together. If you've got any comments, please leave them. We try to respond to as many as we can and it's always good to get your feedback on the shows. And we'll see you again very soon.